Hello everyone, 2022 is coming to a close. Will's doing it. So I saw a good amount of movies this year and some were great and some were not so much. So here are the top five best and worst of 2022. These are just out of the movies I have personally seen this year. I'm sure there's plenty of things that you think should be on these lists, but either I didn't see it or I just don't think it makes these lists. So tell me how wrong I am in the comments, please. Thank you. So starting off with the worst of 2022. These are the five movies I saw this year that either missed the mark or really just made me mad while watching it. So we're going to start with five and make our way down to the worst of the worst. At number five, we have Day Shift. I have reviewed this already, but it's just a classic Netflix stink fest. Jamie Foxx and Dave Franco kill vampires, and Snoop Dogg is there too. Uh, could have been a really, maybe a really cool series instead of a movie, having time to really flesh the world out and get to know the characters a bit more. But instead, we get a vampire hunter you know, world building, and then all that's thrown out the window for a speed run ending and goofy improvised scenes. Netflix needs to learn that it's about quality, not quantity. Next up at number four, we have Hocus Pocus 2. My wife is an enormous fan of the original. She watches it multiple times during the Halloween season, but we were both going into this with very low expectations because we knew sequels down that far down the line are never very good. But this fell even lower than the bar we had. We just, we ha you have to do more than just bring back the stars for the movie to make it good enough in these, these days. A good 20 minutes of it goes a damn Walgreens commercial. I was interested in the beginning, showing them as girls in Salem. I wish that was the movie. Young witches finding their powers, going on old-timey adventures. A prequel would have, been, would have been so much more entertaining. But we got this weird, disjointed story where they just got another flame black candle to bring them back. <laughs> that just seems lazy to me. The original is a classic. Don't mess with it. Don't mess with the originals. That's just what I say. But Disney, you know, of course, Disney wants all the monies. And number three is a more recent flick that I also reviewed already. Black Adam. Man, this movie was so lame. DC really knows how to just add too much to a movie stew. So many ingredients, it makes it bloated and complex for no reason. Like I said in my review, this movie you know, was trying to be made for so long. The Rock built this up as the best thing ever. And it's just meh. The tone needed to be balanced. We didn't need so many brand new characters. We are meeting Black Adam for the first time. We don't need a brand new team to steal the spotlight. But now that James Gunn is in charge of DC, hopefully they can reorganize and get these movies back on track. They have so many good properties, and they're just, they could just be some amazing movies. Black Adam is just not one of them. At the runner-up, number two, we have The Bubble. Not the most popular on the list. Um, for those who haven't heard about it, it's a Judd Apatow-directed Netflix movie about a franchise movie during COVID. So it's a bit meta, you know, showing uh, COVID precautions and having all the actors stay inside the bubble while they're filming. Um, but then the movie just goes off the rails, and not in the good way. The story kind of just went out the window, and it feels like it was a collection of like sketches inside their bubble. Um, a lot of great people in this, in this movie just did not come together, unless the chaoticness was intentional to contrast how our lives have been because of the pandemic. Oh my god. No, I don't think it's that deep. Uh, anyway, if it comes up while you're scrolling through Netflix, you can just keep on scrolling. Uh, it's not worth your precious, precious time. And at number one... For the worst movie of 2022, in my opinion, drum roll please, blah, 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 or really whoopee cushion sound, uh, Morbius. It is Morbin time. This movie became such a meme. It's just la how laughably bad it was. Jared Leto decided after all my movies of good, good, insane characters and being totally over the top, I'm going to set this one out and just be myself. He did zero acting in this. It had all the tropes of a bad comic book movie. Instead of showing him discovering his vampire powers, he's just going to do a voiceover of just listing them. Another classic is having uh, a villain that's exactly the same powers, but this one, he's evil. Uh, and of course, the post credit scene that made absolutely no sense at all. This movie he got dunked on so much that Sony thought it, that they'd re-release it. People would go to theaters, theaters and see it ironically, like they did for Cats. But it was even funnier when no one saw it and their whole plan bombed so hard. Uh, I have full confidence that this number one will not be argued by anyone in the comments. Um, the other ones, maybe people have some gripe with, but not this one. This one's the worst. Morbius, congrats. You are Will's doing it. Top worst movie of 2022. Congratulations. Now let's turn to the good stuff. These are the, my picks for the best movies that I've seen for 2022. Starting with number five, we have Turning Red. An absolutely delightful animated Pixar movie. Pixar has an amazing track record of bringing great personal stories to life and pairing it with more and more impressive visuals. 
I swear, every time I see a newer animated movie, the lighting is just insane. Turning Around is a great coming-of-age story, and it works on a couple levels. Much younger kids will like it because there's a cute, big, red, fuzzy panda. Uh, and the older kids and adults will like the subtext because it's really about her getting her period, going through puberty, and really finding out who she is as an individual. I think anyone could find something to relate to in this number five pick. Moving along to number four, we have Prey. This is a Hulu original and is a prequel slash sequel to the Predator universe. Uh, the Predator movie that came out in 2018 was just absolutely awful, so I was skeptical. But this is a simple, stripped-down Predator story. No crazy spaceship stuff, not even a sci-fi movie, really. It follows a Comanche warrior living in the Great Plains in 1719, and she wants to be recognized by her tribe for the great warrior that she is. The movie does a great job of showing her learning through the movie and changing her strategy so in the end, spoiler alert, she can defeat the alien predator. She doesn't do it by brute force, but by using her environment and her smarts. Uh, I wish this movie was completely in Comanche. There isn't too much dialogue and I think it would have kept me really immersed if we didn't break into English. Come on people, sometimes reading subtitles is a good thing. But really great, really great movie. If you haven't seen it, go check it out on Hulu. Alright, at number three, I'm sure it's on most people's list, Top Gun Maverick. I have a review of this already out, so if you want, I don't want to repeat myself too much, but wow, what a great movie. Like, it has the complete package from start to finish. The action is amazing inside the jets, but the structure and the pacing was really the star to me. They had a mission, they trained for the mission, and they went out and they did the mission. No distractions, no side stories. They took the blueprint of the first movie and then just built out the best parts and threw away the fluff. Streamlined it just like those jets. Uh, Maverick coming in and doing the practice course in record time was just a fish spunt moment. If you haven't seen this, what have you been doing? The runner-up, the number two, The Batman. Yes, it is long, but I would have liked it even if it was an hour longer. <laughs> Everyone loves Batman, but this one specifically really nailed the world. No one's Batman is great, of course, and don't get me wrong, but their Gotham was very like, just looked like New York or Chicago most of the time, but this, this is Gotham. This was Gotham. Dark always raining i loved it and when the news broke about robert pattinson it was going to be batman everyone was like what edward from twilight myself included but he has done some really great stuff since his twilight days he was an amazing emo bruce wayne and uh in early years batman every single character in this is perfect zoe kravitz seemed to be born to play catwoman and the penguin i don't even think i can call him colin farrell because he completely disappeared into the role and paul dano is always incredible in anything he is in I am very excited to see the sequel for this, and if you can't tell, I am really, really in love with this movie. And the moment you have all been waiting for, the number one movie of 2022, blah, 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 This wasn't a hard decision at all. It is everything, everywhere, all at once. I am so glad I caught this in theaters. I have never seen a more fun, emotional, inventive, visually amazing movie ever. It really was such a new experience. Such a huge fan of Michelle Yeoh. She has such an amazing career. And I'm so glad that she's finally getting the recognition she deserves here in the U.S. And seeing Kihan Kwan again in the spotlight makes me so happy. He has such a cheery energy, and I cannot wait to see what he does next. The filmmaking nerd in me goes nuts watching this movie. So many creative things have been done visually in this movie. Oh my god. Uh, I could have a whole video just about that. It's so inventive, and I just want to see more movies like this. Give the Daniels a Marvel movie and just watch them do some complete, something completely new. This is a serious call to action, okay, folks? If you have not seen Everything Everywhere All at Once, go and watch it. This movie's about to end. Turn it off. Go and watch that movie. You will not regret it. And that is why, without a doubt, I think it is my number one. Go now. Watch it. All right. That is my best and worst of the year. Uh, I wish I could have seen more, but it's, you know, just life sometimes gets in the way. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Leave your best and worst lists in the comments. Uh, and if you could subscribe, I think that'd be great. Uh, see you guys all in 2023. Have a good one. Bye. Will's doing it.